How's it going guys? As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne and this is Deck Ready, my channel all about the Steam Deck. I don't know when this video is posting because I've got a few in the bank right now, but uh, hopefully you had a great weekend. I played a bunch of Dead Rising. That game runs beautifully on the Steam Deck. If you've never played it, it's on sale right now during the Steam Summer Sale. I think it's just a couple of bucks and I just wanted to play it to get ready for the awesome Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster, which is actually a remake that's coming out next year. That's coming out this year. Let me know what you've been playing down in the comments below. In today's video, I've got three great topics to cover. The first one is that frame rates have been massively boosted for certain games on the Steam Deck, but it's not the magic fix that I think a lot of people are presenting it to be. Um, the second news story is that Elden Ring has been fixed on the Steam Deck, but there's a little bit of tinkering you have to do to get this done. And third and finally, we're going to talk about how one of my favorite games was fixed by Proton Experimental. So let's jump into this first news story here, which is all about frame rates being boosted on the Steam Deck. So if you didn't hear, a bunch of Sony's PlayStation games that they ported over to PC just got an update that works on the Steam Deck that allows them to use AMD's FSR 3.1. Now, outside of the updates to the overall quality of FSR, the one thing that FSR 3.1 brings along with it is frame generation. And like I just said, that works on the Steam Deck. So I went ahead and I looked up some videos of this because I didn't have enough space to download Spider-Man Remastered and Ghost of Tsushima's Director's Cut out of my Steam Deck. And it looks like you're gonna get some decent quality out of this, but it's again gonna be a very mixed experience that I ultimately don't think is worth it. So basically, as someone who doesn't fully understand the technicals of this, I'm going to explain this in a very basic way. I don't need the pedantic comments this time guys, thank you. Basically the way this works is it essentially doubles your frame rate by introducing AI generated frames. So like it'll read the frame that's showing and then try to generate what you're gonna do next. And it works pretty good in a lot of games, but the big caveat with it is that it basically relies on you having a very high internal frame rate. So obviously at the end of the day, it has to generate less AI frames because the less AI frames you see, the less visual artifacting and degrading of the image and noise you're gonna see on your screen when you're actually playing a game. So the higher the frame rate is the better frame gen works. But if you've looked up videos of FSR 3.1 with frame gen working on the Steam Deck, you've probably seen that little graph at the top of the screen that reads frame time, uh, looking like it's outputting at 60 FPS. But the problem is if your input is 30 FPS or less, it's not only gonna introduce a lot of visual artifacting in the game, it's also going to introduce a lot of input lag because when you use VSync to lock the frame rate or you're putting in too low of an FPS to begin with, the AI frames kind of disrupt the way the game is being controlled and that introduces a lot more latency. So the ideal situation would be to already be running the game at 60 FPS or higher because then the higher the frame rate is, the more negligible that input delay is going to be. But when you use VSync with frame generation, whether you're on Nvidia cards or AMD cards, uh, you're basically gonna get more input delay regardless because the lower the output frame rate, the more input lag there's going to be. So when talking about whether or not this is a good update or not, I mean, obviously getting frame gen on the Steam Deck as a whole is great just because it seems like a feature that shouldn't work on such a small handheld device, but it really does come down to what kind of person you are. You know, if you're someone who doesn't mind playing games on the lowest possible settings, just so you can get the highest frame rate possible, I don't think this is going to be a bad thing for you because you're already used to lower quality looking games and like the artifacting will definitely look worse, but you'll get to play the game at 60 FPS or more, which I think might be worth it to you. But if you're someone like me who cares more about that perfect sweet spot between visual quality and stable frame rates. This is kind of like a nothing burger for me because my preferred way to play Steam Deck games is to get the settings dialed in to where I can get a 30 FPS experience that never drops below it and never stutters or like gives you frame spikes or anything like that. I've been talking about this with Forza Horizon 4 a lot lately because I've been playing a lot of it on my Steam Deck. I, if you use the dynamic high settings and lock it to 30 FPS, it'll stay at 30 FPS and you won't see any stuttering. And before before you comment again that there's no setup process for that game, just consider guys that maybe by the time you saw the video I posted on how to get Forza Horizon 4 up and running, Valve had updated Proton to fix the problems that there were with the game. Like maybe, just maybe that happened because it's only happened a thousand other times. So like, yeah, I understand that now it works just fine out of the box, but at the time I was actually playing it, which was before Valve updated it, it did not work out of the box, okay? Anyway, when it comes to frame generation, I'm 
I'm like not really a fan of it, honestly. Like even on my main PC, which has a 4090 in it, uh, I lock games at 60 FPS and just boost the settings. And then I use RTSS to really lock the frame rate at 60, just so I can get that perfect straight line graph across the screen. But if you are someone who wants to look into putting frame generation in these games on your Steam Deck, the one thing you really got to keep in mind is that you need to limit the megahertz of the GPU to 1200. If you don't do that, your uh, frame time graph is going to be a solid brick all the way across the screen. But if you use the in-game VSync in combination with locking the megahertz to 1200, then you'll get a pretty even frame time graph. You'll see little stutters when it introduces AI frames, but like if you're locking it at 60 that or 45 even, that shouldn't happen all that often. Anyway, that brings us to the second news story here, which is all about Elden Ring on the Steam Deck. So this is where I've been playing Elden Ring. I'm pretty far in the game now. I wanted to beat it before Shadow of the Erd Tree came out, but then uh, an addiction took over where I had to play Gran Turismo 7 every second that I had in a day, and I kind of fell off on uh, Elden Ring, but then the update came out that came along with the DLC, and it kind of screwed things up on the Steam Deck, so I was like, ah, I'll put it down for a little bit and wait for a fix. Now that my Gran Turismo 7 addiction is kind of subsiding, everything is coincided here, and there's a new Proton GE update you can get that fixes one major issue. So essentially what was happening is because of that DLC update, they also updated the e easy anti-cheat software for the game. And if you didn't own the DLC, playing online on your Steam Deck would give you a weird error message and not allow you to play offline. But this new version of Proton GE actually adds in that new version of easy anti-cheat. So it should fix everything for you if you grab that. If you don't have Proton GE figured out or you're just not really that interested in it, I'd assume that Valve, like with Forza Horizon 4, will have a Proton experimental fix out very soon because Elden Ring is the flagship game of the Steam Deck, but that's one major issue that's been fixed. And also in messing around with the game with this new Proton GE update, I did notice it dropping frames a lot less. Like when you go into the DLC zone, there's a lot better graphics than the actual main game. Like it's kind of like Cyberpunk 2077 and Phantom Liberty. So during kind of crazy moments during boss fights and when there's a lot of particles on screen, even at the recommended settings, you would see it drop below 30 FPS. That doesn't seem to be happening anymore with this new version of Proton GE. So once again, you know, the people working at Valve, and in this case, the people working on Proton GE have been one step ahead of the developers at From Software who refuse to fix and release working PC ports for any of their games. And that's the one thing I wish they would invest in is PC performance, because as someone who's played every major FromSoft release on PC since Dark Souls 1 at launch, the only one that has worked correctly for me on my main gaming PC that I had at the time was uh, Sekiro, which is weird. I don't know why that one worked great, but all the other ones don't. And Elden Ring on my main gaming PC, I still get stutters on my Steam Deck because of the work Valve did with Proton. I get no stutters and hopefully, hopefully we get the full release of SteamOS 3.0 soon so I can install it on a partition and be eliminated from stutters forever because I hate stuttering in games. It is really cool though, like outside of all this, that Elden Ring runs so well on the Steam Deck. I am absolutely loving it. Uh, I want to also get back to Lies of P. I started it on the Steam Deck last year and I don't know why I fell off because I had a blast playing it, but I've been reading this book called Speaks the Nightbird. It takes place in colonial America. It's like a horror book and it kind of like gives me the imagery in my head when I read it of Lies of P. So uh, yeah, I want to play that game after I finish up Elden Ring. But yeah, if you were worried about Elden Ring not working or you're upset that you couldn't play online on your Steam Deck, just go grab the newest version of Proton GE or wait a couple days for Valve to update Proton Experimental and everything should be figured out. And that brings us to the third news story here, which is that Proton Experimental got updated and fixed one of my favorite games. So if you've been watching for the past month or so, I've been talking a lot about Burnout Paradise Remastered and Need for Speed Hot Pursuit Remastered. The new Proton Experimental update actually fixes the memory issues that Burnout Paradise was having, which is great because what would happen is as you played the game for longer and longer periods of time, the VRAM would actually fill up and then the game would crash. So now that those memory issues are fixed by Proton, that shouldn't happen anymore. And this is all anecdotal as well, but I did notice that the frame rates overall seem to be a lot better. Like I play that game at a lock 60 FPS and you know, in some races, like when you're doing marked man or you're doing the races that have a full convoy of like six or seven racers in the race, you'll see the frame rate dip to like the high fifties, but it's not really that bad. I just noticed that happening a lot less after this Proton Experimental update. But like, it's hard to get excited about one of my favorite games getting fixed if I have to have in the back of my head at all times, the stupid EA launcher situation. I've done a lot of research into this to 
see if there's any way around it to like to play EA games offline. And the only real fix for it that people have seemed to figure out is that if you are leaving the house and you want to play one of these EA games like Burnout or Need for Speed, what you have to do is actually start the game up, get it running, get past the menus, get past the EA and all that crap, get into the game and then put your Steam Deck into rest mode. And then when you take it out of rest mode, whether or not you're on Wi-Fi, it'll still continue to work just fine because I don't know, the license check saved or something like that. But if you're someone who has a Steam Deck, you've definitely run into the issue before where when you put a game into rest mode, sometimes for some inexplicable reason, when you go to turn your Steam Deck back on a couple of hours later, the game will either be stuck in a frozen state or it will have crashed in the background and you'll already be at the desktop. So I don't know if anyone at Valve is watching this video. It'd be cool if you were. I'd really appreciate anything you guys could do to just talk to EA and any of these other developers that have launchers that require online connections to just say, look, this is degrading the overall experience of the Steam Deck for Steam users. And like you're selling these games for money. They're not free games, you know, like people are spending money to play these games on PC. It's not really that big of a deal for you to take out your launcher because we already have piracy checks in place by buying them on Steam to begin with, right? Like they already have everything that they need there. You don't need that extra layer that just makes the overall experience of playing these games so much worse for people who are paying money to play them. Because as someone who loves a lot of racing games, a lot of the good ones are made by EA and it just sucks like when I'm in my backyard and I'm far away from my Wi-Fi network that I have to walk in my house to actually start the game up and then walk back outside to play games in the backyard. Like I, you think EA being a company that makes games would want their games to be presented in the best light and not this completely abysmal experience they've created by needing you to check in online when you don't have to do that on console, which I also think is bullshit. But anyway, guys, that's all I've got for you in today's video. As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and shape on.